welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, ready if you are to probe once again into the depths of imagination and the heights of illusion. Illusion. What is life? A philosopher asked. And to answer his own question, he replied, life is an illusion, a shadow, a story. And this may well be. But in that event, we may well ask, whose illusions, whose shadow, whose story? Is this life only a dream? Are we characters in our own reverie? If that is true, and it may well be, who and what are we when we awake? Our mystery drama, Death is a Dream, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little world is rounded with a sleep. So said William Shakespeare, and so lives Mary Catherine Collins. Mary Catherine lives in a world of never-ending nightmare. It's a world of heart-stabbing terror and apprehension. Every night, there's the dream. The same dream. It refuses to leave her. She can only fight off sleep for so long, and then the dream once again overwhelms her. And each night, the dream is exactly the same in every minute detail... It's just the way it was when she dreamed it for the first time on that night of August the 14th. That night is seared in her memory forever. I see Joe. My brother Joe. And he's walking, walking his beat. The night's dark. And a soft rain is falling. And drops of water glisten on his black policeman's raincoat. And he's whistling that tune, the tune I never heard anywhere else. And he always said, one day I'll tell you the name of it. And he's walking down that street, that old, tired, run-down street, alone, all alone. And because it's my dream, he doesn't see what I see, just around the corner. A man. It's too hard to make out his face in the dark, but he carries a box in one hand and a pistol in the other. And he's climbing out of the window of a warehouse, just as my brother's about to turn the corner. And I scream, look out, Joe! Look out, he's got a gun! Joe! Uh, uh, but he didn't hear me. He didn't hear me. My brother never heard me. I... Oh. oh, it was a dream. Yes. Hold. Uh, yes, just a minute. Who? Who is it? Mary? It's Frank Miller. Oh! Uh, guess what? What is it, Frank? Come on in. Mary, I, uh... You... You're here because of... Joe. Y- yes, Mary. I, uh... Something has happened to Joe, and you've come to tell me yourself. Mary. Joe is dead. He's dead, isn't he? Why else would you be here at this time of the night? Joe's dead. Yes, ma'am. He was killed by some hoodlum who was robbing a warehouse at the end of Water Street. Mary, who told you? I saw it happen. I saw it happen. Now, Mary, you must get a hold of yourself. He was shot just as he turned the corner... His revolver was still in his holster. He never had a chance. Joe never had a chance. I know how hard it is, Mary. I saw it happen. Oh, why? Why did I see it happen? I saw it happen. As if I were sitting in a theater. And it was all taking place on a giant screen. And from that night on, I saw it happen. Every night, every night I was condemned to relive it again. And again. And again. Lieutenant Miller. Who? 
Oh, look, uh, tell her... Uh... No, tell her to come in. Mary, it's good to see you. Is it? Good to see me, Frank? Mary, how can you say that? I'm becoming a pest. Admit it, Frank. Oh, I'll admit no such thing. I haunt you day and night. I pester you with phone calls every hour on the hour. Well, it's it's understandable. I I know how much your brother Joe meant to you. No, you don't. Nobody could ever hope to understand how much Joe meant to me. Mary, I'm sorry. We're all sorry. But sorrow gets us nowhere. It's been six weeks now since Joe was killed. Mary, we've had every available man out on this case. I know. It isn't your fault. But I know how the department works. And little by little, my brother is going to become a statistic. Just another police officer killed in the line of duty by an unknown assailant. Mary, we're doing our best. I didn't say you weren't. What I'm saying is that your best isn't good enough. That's not fair. Fair? Oh. What's fair? Was it fair for my brother to be gunned down without warning? His revolver still in his holster? Oh, why did he have to be killed? Joe was a good cop. He gave everybody a break, and he liked to help people. Why did he... Look, Mary, we'll get the killer. No, I don't think so. And so that's why... That's why what? That's why I'm going to get him myself. Well, just what exactly does that mean? It means I'll have to get him myself. Well, how can you... I plan to spend a great deal of time in that neighborhood. Doing... Doing what? Teaching school. Teaching school? Why not? I'm a school teacher. <laughs> but you're teaching uptown. I've asked for a transfer. Do you know what those kids are like? What that area is like? It was where my brother worked and was murdered. What can you possibly hope to... I intend to become a part of that neighborhood. <laughs> you mean you'll poke around and ask questions? So you can put it any way you like. You realize you can get yourself killed? I have a job to do. <laughs> I'd taken step one. I'd made the decision to leave the soft and delightful job at North Crescent High School, known and with good reason as the country club. My principal was completely at a loss to understand why I'd want to leave his pleasant, well-ordered school for what he could only describe as the witch's cauldron at Southern District. Well, of course, there was no way I could... And now, step two. To be accepted, judge's principal at Southern District... Hey, I realized it wasn't going to be automatic. You thought we were so desperate for teachers here we'd grab anybody who walks in? Well, truthfully, I didn't think there'd be... Well, the first part of your assumption is correct. We are desperate for teachers. Teachers. That's why we have to be very particular. But I... Yes, Miss Collins. I have a good record. Miss Collins, tell me. What are you doing here? Oh, isn't that obvious? I want to teach English at your school. Why? Because. Uh, because I'm an English teacher. You've done more fencing in the five minutes you've been in this office than all the three musketeers put together. You have had the plum of the system. A job at North Crescent, mostly motivated kids from comfortably situated families. Ninety percent of them go on to college. Do you know what we... Oh, I think so. You think so? Miss Collins... I know. Our difficult children. Difficult? <laughs> yes. Children? No. These are only adolescents chronologically. Well, I felt that there was no challenge at North Crescent. I see. And that here I would be tested to the utmost of my ability. I want to see if I can measure up. Well, Mr. Hodges, won't you say something? Miss Collins, I am seldom, if ever, at a loss for words. But I simply cannot figure you out. You mean you don't believe me? I need teachers. <laughs> Cavalier as I may sound, I need teachers. I work at, with seniors. Do you? Yes, especially with the advanced lit courses. Do you think you can... Shakespeare? I've done it. Okay. Good luck. We'll set up a program for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hodges. And I know that I'll be successful. I'm sure you will. Provided you survive. And so the time arrived for me to report for my first class. 
And I paused at the doorway and looked into the room. My heart did more than sink. It died within me. That classroom was a madhouse. They were tough kids. I almost regretted my transfer, but I remembered my brother Joe. And I knew I'd have to go through with this somehow. I needed a reason to be in that neighborhood. And I had to start with a nucleus of friends. And acquaintances. Hey, look at this. Hey, 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 yeah. You report to the principal's office. Oh, how about oh, that? Yeah, I know. And you, you, you there with the red hair, will you please sit down? Oh, that's a wig. I'll take it off. The dumb lady near the window. <laughs> yeah, but she ain't no lady. Hey, hey, hey there ain't no action around here. Let's dance, let's dance, let's dance, pal. Let's move it. All right, now. Turn off that radio. Yeah, hey, teach, can I have the pleasure of this man? I've now, seen a fight. Will oh, you please turn, turn off that radio? Now, put that off. I'm sorry, Mr. Hodges. It was a fiasco. I know. I was just across the hall. I saw it all. You saw it? And you permitted it? We have to find out if you can control these kids. You can empty the room by sending everyone to my office for discipline, but that's not teaching. I'm afraid you'd better go back to North... No, no, please, please, please give me another chance. Why? Because I could understand if you liked these kids, but... But you don't. Oh, I, I, I do, really. No. And they said the minute you walked in. They saw it. They, they felt it. They felt what? Your hostility. Your contempt. Oh, that's not true. It isn't. You are repelled by these youngsters, and it shows. Now, Miss Collins, you'd better go back to the well-ordered world of North Crescent. Oh, please, Mr. Hodges, you must give me another chance. I'm sorry, Miss Collins. It won't work. No, you can't turn me down. Miss Collins, I will give you another chance on one condition. You must tell me the real reason you want to work here. But I told you. No, you'd... And now I insist. Very well, Mr. Hodges. I'll tell you. Well, what will Mary tell him? The real reason? If she does, how will he take it? If not the real one, then she needs a reason that sounds convincing... And can she make one up on the spur of the moment? One thing we know, Mary must have the job if she's to have any chance of finding her brother Joe's killer. Well, fortunately, she has a few moments to think about before I return with Act Two. Things are seldom what they seem. Skilk masquerades as cream. It's one of Catherine Collins' favorite verses. And now, it's going to form a pattern for the next portion of her life. She is attempting to masquerade as a dedicated teacher in a slum district school in order to find out, if she can, the identity of her brother's killer. But her first problem is to get the job. And John Hodges' principal has very grave doubts indeed. Mr. Hodges, I agree. It's time we told each other the truth. Uh, Let's say it's time you told me the truth. Uh, my name, Collins. Does that mean anything to you? Collins? Collins? No, I don't think so. Well, almost two weeks ago, a police officer was killed in this neighborhood. Yes. Yes, I I knew him. Officer Collins. I even knew his last name. Everyone called him Joe. He was my brother. Oh. Oh, I am sorry. And then you know that he was an unusual man. Yeah. He could have risen high. He could have gone far in the department, but he chose not to. He felt that good cops were needed in places like this. And I feel that if I could take his place somehow, if I could be the kind of influence in the classroom that he tried to be out on the street. Well, I won't be the one to refuse you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hodges. Miss Collins, why... Why do you think your brother was so successful with the people in our neighborhood? Well, I guess... I suppose... He had a gift. He sure did. 
And do you know what that gift was? Like the people. That's 90% of what you need, Miss Collins. I had told him a half-truth, but it was enough to nail down the job. And now, in order to get it, I'd have to like those kids. But how? Okay, round one. Hey, what Come is fighting. That? Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, fight. Fight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah, fight again. Now, now, calm down. Now. Class, today I am going to introduce you to a man named William Shakespeare. Uh, yeah, where is he? He's right here in this, in my hand. Well, why should I want to meet him? What's in it for me? Uh-huh. <laughs> Very good question. What is your name? Charlie, I believe, huh? Oh, yeah, good, 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 good. Well, you should become acquainted with Mr. Shakespeare, because as soon as you go back to reform school... Uh, to all the reform oh, school. Yeah, yeah. I go up to the big joint on my next rap. Well, either way, you're going to have a lot of time on your hands. And Mr. Shakespeare can make it pass very quickly. Hello? Mary, I finally cracked you down. Oh, hello, Frank. I didn't know you were going to live down there, too. Well, see, I found this little uh, apartment. It's uh, convenient to the school. Mary, the neighborhood. Oh, I know. Believe me, I know. But people do live here. Mary, what are you doing? You can't go around asking people... Who killed police officer Collins? Yes, I understand. Well, then what are you doing? I don't know. Frank, it's just being here. I mean, I, I could hear something or see something. The department is working on it. You can get her. Oh, Frank. Well, what is it? Well, what's the matter? Frank, I, I. Mary, is something wrong? I can have a cop over just a second. No. No, I'm all right. Are you sure? <laughs> What's the matter? You think everybody's deaf? What do you want? Listen, I, I, I live upstairs in apartment 4F. Oh, yeah, you're the school teacher. Yes, I, I have to see the superintendent. Uh, honey, down here we don't have no superintendents. We've got j- to see him immediately. Well, you can't do it. Why not? Because he's drunk. <laughs> Look for yourself. You see? Sprawled all over the couch. Well, somebody has to do something about what... There's a rat in my apartment. Only one? Oh, <laughs> you're lucky. I just saw him. How do you know it's for him? I was sitting at the telephone and I saw this enormous rat. You sure it wasn't a mouse? Oh, what's going to be done about it? You got a gun? Shoot him. Now, please. Okay. When Straw out here wakes up, I'll send him to your place. He'll bring up a broom handle or a trap. I don't know what he does. And what am I going to do in the meantime? About what? About the rat. I don't know. Try to make friends with him. I am friends with him. Well... The days passed and I couldn't make friends with anybody. In the class, I'd reached a point where I was being tolerated, but surely. And in the neighborhood, I was obviously alien clay. There was something different about me. My clothes, my accent. I had the look of somebody who didn't have to live there. And that made me suspect. And another thing, I was a teacher. I worked for the government, and the government always meant trouble. There were police, parole officers, and welfare investigators. I was beginning to feel very foolish. How was I ever going to get anywhere in finding Joe's killer? To whom could I talk? Well, hiya, Mary. Well, good morning, child. Ah, uh, you saw because I called you Mary. Ah, it ain't as if we were in class. Hey, where'd you get the car? I didn't get it. I bought it. I earned the money and I bought it. Oh, why do you always have to make a lesson out of everything? You're trying to tell me, get a job, Charlie. Be a good little boy, work hard, save your money, and one day you'll have enough to yes, buy... Yes, I suppose that is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, work is for suckers. There's a quicker, easier way. And the jails are filled with people who took it. Now, listen, Charles, you like this car. Well, I worked to put the money in the bank. The idea is not to put dough in the bank, but to take it out. Ah, but you have to deposit it first. No, you don't. Not if you walk in with a gun. But that's stealing. What about all the smooth, dignified, white-haired guys who steal millions and get away with it? Well, if you want to be a crook, why not be the best? Get yourself a good education so you can become one of the smooth, dignified, white-haired boys yourself. Do you mind? Why? I mean, is your way better? Do you want to spend your life in jail or be gunned down? Well, Mary, what are you doing here? 
making a living. Oh, come on, come on. You, you don't have to work here. You're a class dame. What's your angle? Angle? Everybody's got an angle. Unless... Unless what? Unless you like it down here. But then you'd have to be nuts. All right, all right, everybody, that's it. Yeah. Now for tomorrow we have pages thirty through forty-five. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, what the heck is this? Oh, it's so much. Uh, Miss yeah. Collins. Yes, yes, Tony. What is it? Uh, uh it, it ain't nothing. No, no, it isn't anything. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It isn't anything. Uh, I. You have well. Well, uh, like I said, it ain't. Uh, it isn't nothing. Uh, anything. But, uh, I, I want to tell you something. Yes? About Shakespeare. Oh? I used to think, uh, you know, Shakespeare, what gives was Shakespeare, you know? But, uh, all of a sudden, I, I, I seen it. I mean, I seen the guys for real. Is that so? Yeah, like you was reading. And, and you said, uh, neither a borrower nor a lender be. Remember? Th- that's Shakespeare, right? <laughs> yes, it's Hamlet. Yeah, this guy, uh, Polonius says that, but... But but that's what my old man he he should rest in peace. Yeah, that's what that's what my old man always used to say to me. He'd say, Tony, don't borrow money off in a guy. Don't lend money off in a guy. And you'll be friends with everybody, you see? Yes, I see. This uh Polonius, I, I hear what he says. Uh, okay, he knows some fancy words my old man never heard of, but uh this Polonius, he's uh he's my old man. Well I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I I kind of missed the old man, you know. Uh, And now I come across this guy and... uh, Well, uh, what I want to say is... um, uh, Thanks. Well, I'm sure you're welcome, Tony. Look, uh, if there's something I can do for you... I I mean, you name it. Is there something I can do for you? How could I ask him? How could I say, do you know who killed Officer Joe Collins? kind of a question would that be? And where would it lead? And why would he know? But I finally promised that I would call on him if ever I needed help. I don't know how long I'd been sitting there when... Mary. What? I was walking down the hall. Your classroom door was open. I saw you sitting there. There was something very strange about you. Oh, really? Yes. For the first time since you've come here, I saw you smiling. Oh, I always smile. No, no. This was truly a smile, as if it came from the basic meaning of the word itself, which means to be astonished. What happened? Well, I think I just taught somebody something. And you're starting to get an inkling of the reason why your brother Joe worked down here. Hmm. I think so. Hey, Mary. Oh, hello, Dora. Uh, did you tell your husband about the leaky faucet? Oh, yeah, yeah. He'll get around to it one of these weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen. Now, now, tell me if I'm talking out of turn. Uh, are you on the lam? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, you know what I mean, kid? Do the cops want you? Well, what makes you think the cops want me? Because huh? a cop has been around asking for you. A plain clothes guy. Well, then how did you know he was a cop? Oh, kid, I can smell him. He's in the hallway now. He is. Well, uh, thanks. Ah, so you are on the land. I didn't say that. Then what are you going back to your car for? Well, I just remembered. I uh, have a date. Listen, kid. I'm glad to help. Now, before you come back, give me a ring, huh? I'll tell you if the coast is clear. Of course, I knew it was only Frank. But I acted on the spur of the moment, and acted is exactly the right word for it. And Dora spread the word. The implication was that I was sort of hiding out down here. And instantly, my status changed. People no longer stopped talking when I passed by. I was no longer given guarded attention when I walked into a shop. Evidently, now I belonged. But I was getting no closer to my objective. How could I come out with the direct questions? I was becoming a part of the neighborhood, but I still wasn't getting anywhere. Give it up, Mary. 
Frank, I can't. I've got to get that murder. I know, I know, but it will have to be done in the usual way. And maybe it won't be done at all. That could happen. And the killer goes free, is that right? What am I going to do? Come home, to where you belong. No, I belong where I can find Joe's clerk. But it hasn't worked. Help me, Frank. How? Tell me how I should go about it. I, I don't know what moves to make. There are no moves you can make. I mean, if you were in my place, you are a trained detective, what would you do? Well, I'd have stool pigeons out. We did, you know, but nobody picked up the slightest rumble. Very well, the informer angle has been covered. Then what? Well, the truth is we're doing what you're doing and with no more success. What's got us licked is if we could only get a description, any kind of description, then we could ask definite questions. We could ask, do you know a guy who codes like this or that? But there are no witnesses. What? What did you say, Frank? I said, there are no witnesses. But that isn't true. Well, what isn't true? There was a witness. <laughs> Mary, what are you saying? There was a witness. There was a witness. Was there? I've been following the story very carefully and closely, and I'm not aware of any witness. After all, Joe was killed on a lonely street. No one was there what had happened. Yet Mary says there was a witness. Oh, oh, yes, of course there was. Can you figure out who? It should take you more than a few moments, and by that time, I shall return with Act Three. Joe Collins was killed in the line of duty. He was walking along a deserted street late one rainy night, doing his job, walking his beat. Someone shot him down and fled. And two months have gone by, and the police are no nearer to catching the killer than they were the night it happened. Only his sister has discovered the one element that is absolutely vital to the successful capture of the criminal. Or so she says. Mary, there were no witnesses. No one saw it happen. That isn't true. Someone did see it happen. Who? Me. What? I saw it happen. Mary, you weren't there. I didn't say I was there. I said I saw it happen. But how could you possibly... Because I dreamed about it. Oh, Mary. That night you came to my apartment to tell me yourself, remember? I remember. And you will also remember that I knew, I knew it before you even told me. Yes, I remember. Well, how did it happen that I could even tell you where? At the end of Water Street... And remember, you were shocked. Remember, you said, Mary, who told you? At the time, I was upset and nervous. How would I know that it was Water Street? I saw Joe turn that corner. And I saw the man coming out of the window of the warehouse. And I saw that he had a gun. And he fired as soon as he saw my brother. I am the witness because I saw the whole thing. All right, Mary. Fine, tell me. What does the killer look like? What? Well, you say you saw the killing. Describe the killer. Is that an unfair question? Oh, no, but I... Oh, but what? Well, I didn't get a good look at him. Oh. See, I I was so terrified, and I was so afraid for Joe that I... I and besides, the man was in the shadow. I couldn't see him. Uh, I hate to say this, Mary, but your dream really doesn't do us any good. From a practical point of view, that is. Yes, but next time I'll... Next time I'll concentrate on the killer. Next time? Yes, next time. Tonight... Every night I dream this dream, Frank. Every night. And this time I'm not going to fight it. I'll wait for it gladly. I'll welcome it. And this time I won't look at my brother. I'll look at the killer. Joe! Joe, look out. He's got a gun. Joe! I tried to look at the man in the shadowy darkness, but I couldn't take my eyes off my brother. And it's in that darkness that the killer exists. And I've got to find him there. I must remember to look there, to look again. You sent for me, John? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know there was anyone here with you. Hi, Titch. Well, what's the trouble? 
You'll have to go to the police station and identify your car. Why? Well, it seems uh, Charles here and a few of his buddies took your car and went joyriding and then piled it up against a telephone pole. They would have abandoned it except for the fact that a police cruiser happened along. The rest got away. Charles was caught. Oh? Uh-huh. Preliminary estimates on the damage run about $900. Oh, what's everybody running a fee for the insurance pays, don't it? That's a great attitude. I'm glad you like it. This time I'm afraid it's jail. I've given up on you, Charles. Now you're breaking my heart. Oh, why does Charles have to go to jail? Stealing a car is against the law. Who says he stole the car? What? Who says he stole the car? The truth is I gave him permission to use the car. Mary... Mary, it's wrong for you. No, you see, I don't use it very much. And I understand if you don't run a car regularly, you get carbon deposits. Isn't that so? This is not the way to do things. Well, that's the truth. I won't permit it. John, it's the way it happens. Okay. Okay, I'll hold still. But on one condition. This one and his pals. They've got to get jobs and cover the insurance bill. That sounds reasonable. The foreman at Jackson's warehouse... You fellas can all work there after school. And now, if you'll excuse me. Thanks. I, uh... I said you were a class name. What's been done is done, Charles. And you will have to pay to have it fixed. Oh, listen, me and the guys can steal you better one. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think so. Now, listen, you're smart, Charles. Why be a cheap crook? How about becoming one of those smooth, dignified guys? For that, you got to go to college. So? Me? Yes, you. Oh, you got to have rocks in your skull. Me go to college? Why not? Yeah, why not? That's it. Say why not. Say it and keep saying it and say it all the time. And after a while, you won't find a single reason against it. Why are you doing this? Because as a teacher, it's my job to inspire you to get all the education you can handle. And you are bright enough to handle a great deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why'd you get me off that stolen car, Rep? Oh, that? Yeah, I can't figure it. Nobody ever done nothing for me before. I mean, zilch, zero, nada. Well, isn't it a better world when people try to help each other? Yeah, sure. All right, what can I do to help you? Oh, someday I might ask you some questions. Questions? Like what? Well, like, would you know... A certain person? So ask, what do you want to know? Well, I don't know yet. But when you find out, you'll ask, won't you? Oh, yes. I'll ask. Joe! Joe, look out! Look out, he's got a gun! Joe! Something happened. In the dream, I saw the man. Clearly. For the first time. Not his face. I didn't get the chance. But I saw his body. I saw his body clearly defined in the shadow. He was young. Young even as some of the kids in my own classes. And he was slim. Almost thin. And he was tall. And tomorrow night... Tomorrow night I'll concentrate on his face. Suppose I could give you a description of the killer. That'd be great. But where would you get it? Well, every night in my nightmare, I see him more and more clearly. You mean you want a jury to believe that a man you see in a dream is Well, why killer? not? I've seen all the rest of the crime. Can you imagine what a defense attorney would do with you on the stand? Frank, the man I see in the dream is the killer. We'll need more than a dream to convict. Well, maybe you do, but I don't. That means that I can handle all of it myself. Mary, you're not saying what I think you're saying. The murderer who killed my brother will be dealt with, if not by the law, then by me. Mary! I must sleep. I must fall asleep. Right now. Now, while I'm still calm and relaxed, I need all my energy... To look into that shadow along the wall of the warehouse, I've got to see his face tonight. I must see his face. 
the face of the killer. And then I shall hunt him down. Tonight. Tonight I will see. Joe! Look out, he's got a gun. Look out, Joe. That tall kid with the blonde hair and the scar across his... Oh, my God! It's... Charles, I wonder, could you stay after class for a few minutes? Yeah, right on, Hey, what are you going to stay after, Charlie? Ah, knock it off. Charles, Charles, Hmm? Charles. Uh, I need some help. Anytime. Well, I have to drive out into the country uh, to pick up an antique, and I need someone to... To lift? Carry? Oh, well, I'm your pigeon. Uh, We're going to get back early. It's just that I got a date. Yeah, who cares? If she don't like it, I can get somebody else. I've always been independent with names. And I'm sure you can afford to be with that blonde hair. And even that scar makes you look handsome. Well, are you ready? Sure. Oh, listen, oh, I'm glad I found you, Mary. You, uh, you have a telephone call in my office. His name is Frank. He said it's of vital importance. What? What is it, Frank? We got him, Mary. We got him. You got who? Well, who do you think? The killer. The man who murdered your brother. But that's... Just... That's what, Mary. Do you realize what I've just told you? I... We got him. Are, are you sure? It's ice cold. He was arrested in a stick-up at Larson City, just north of here. We checked his gun, and ballistics says it's the same one that fired the slugs that killed Joe. But... But what? To ice the cake, he even confessed. He did? Yes. Funny. You know, if we'd only known what he looked like, he would have been a cinch to pick up. If only there'd been a witness. He's tall, thin, long blonde hair, and a funny little scar. Oh, Frank. Frank. What is it? Oh, thank you, Frank. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Well, I suppose you'll be leaving us now. Leaving you? Why do you say that? Well, I spoke to Lieutenant Miller. He, He told me everything. Oh, And so, now that the killer has been caught, I suppose it's back to North Crescent High for you. I don't know, John. You see, I'm not at all sure that they caught the killer. But they say the man's confessed. Well, they may have caught the man who pulled the trigger, but the killer is still here. The killer is here in these streets. The killer is what you and my brother Joe kept fighting against day and night. The poverty and the hopelessness and the feeling that nobody gives a damn. Hey, Miss Collins, uh, are we gone? Oh, no, Charles, no. I, um, I changed my mind. Oh, okay. Uh, Look, any time I can help. Oh, you've already helped me. Yeah? How? Oh, you'll never know. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you in class tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps on in this petty pace from day to day. Ah, Shakespeare. Right, Teach? Right. Tomorrow. That's the greatest gift of all gifts. A tomorrow. And Mary Catherine Collins will make sure of that by working today and every day with the kids that Joe loved so much. How fortunate a man Joe was. All the love and care that he had lavished on his sister returned to all the children. And I shall return with some love and a warning in just a few moments. If you're a bargain hunter, art buff, gold lover, gambler, archaeologist, girl watcher, or just plain sun worshiper, you should be in South America right now. Granite International will fly into the land where the American dollar is still worth a dollar. And where, like the opposite of a King Midas, everything you touch seems to be half the price you'd expect to pay. Braniff to South America on an intercontinental DC-8-62 jet. From there, it's up to you. The thick green jungles of the Amazon, the thin blue mountain air of the Andes, noisy Indian markets, or the noisy Rio Festival, tranquil monasteries, or even more tranquil stretches of palm-fringed beach. Ask your travel agent about Braniff's South America, an adventure and a bargain in flying colors. Is this? 
the dream the extension of reality? Who can say? It was given to Mary to dream of her brother's death. Why? And to see the face of his killer. The true face. Not the visage of a man, but the entire countenance of society. The crucible wherein the killers are formed. Here is also a crucible. And we form one of these stories for you seven times a week. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Michael Wager, Bob Caliban, Jack Grimes, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... Tonight's WORM Mystery Theater was also brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. The preceding program.